This morning I woke up at 4 a.m. in preparation for my road trip from Nairobi to Nanyuki where I would be speaking to 130 young men and women from various parts of Kenya. We have just arrived in Nanyuki which is a three and a half hour drive from Nairobi. I was very very excited about the opportunity because anytime I can speak life and light into young men and women essentially leaders of today, I always feel a sense of enthusiasm and energy. Indeed, motivational speaking and working with young people is my calling. So we hit the road at about 7.30 a.m. and the nerves are building. I'm feeling nervous. I don't know why, but I'm feeling so nervous. But it's all positive energy and I always say that nerves are good because it just means that I'm going to transfer those nerves into amazing energy that will be felt by every single young person who I'm gonna be connecting with today. So I'm gonna bring my A game today, exude tons of positive energy, and as always, strive to inspire their lives. The journey is unfolding. Here I am, ladies and gentlemen, in Nanyuki, preparing to speak to a group of 130 enthusiastic young leaders who are a part of the Kenyatta Trust program from all parts of the country. I'm about to step in to deliver a high energy presentation on leadership and how to maximize their journeys and their gifts. Let's do it. So I entered the room to screams and cheers and applause with all of them cheering me on, which gave me that energy, that psych that I needed to go in and wow them. Thank you guys, thank you guys so much, thank you guys. I delivered a passion-fueled presentation called Major Keys, how to grow and glow as a global youth leader. Now I wanted these young men and women to understand that they're not only leaders for Africa, but also leaders for the global community. Now, major key number one was radiate light and life. I want them to know that the energy that they exude is as important a part of being a strong leader as how well they do academically. If you can make others feel good about themselves by exuding light and life, then you definitely have the ability to inspire people to move positively. So, we're not done yet with the energy. I'm going to give you guys five major keys. Five major keys. Five major keys on how to, again, grow and glow as a global youth leader. So if you have a piece of pen and paper, please take that out. This presentation is all about leadership. It's all about being an effective, confident, inspirational, global youth leader. Does that sound good? All right, all right. Now I said, before we start writing, I need you guys to stand up one more time. Please stand up one more time, one more time. Now, major key number one, major key number one on being a global youth leader is that you have to radiate. 
You have to radiate. Does anybody understand what the word radiate means? Radiate. To, to shine. I love it. Thank you so much. That was great. To shine. Yes. You guys have to shine. When I say radiate, that means you have to shine. You have to show your personality, your passion, your talents, your interests. Because the world, let me say this, guys. Each of you in here has a special gift. Everybody in here has a special, unique gift, talent, passion, and skill. She doesn't have what you have. She doesn't have what you have. You don't have what he has. I don't have what you have. He doesn't have what you have. Nobody has what you have, Zachariah. You understand me? Nobody. So I want you guys to know that major key number one for being a global youth leader is all about radiating light, and life. Think about that. Being a global youth leader is all about radiating light and life. So when people are around you, they should feel happy. They should feel energized. They should feel excited. Are you excited right now? Good, good, good. I'm excited too. So I want you guys to know that your light and your life is one of the major keys toward helping you become that global youth leader. So on the count of three, I need you guys to do something for me so we can start radiating more of that light and life. I want you guys to jump as high as you possibly can. So make some space. Create a little bit of space. Create a little bit of space. So again, today's session is all about Jabari Inspires giving you all five major keys on how to maximize your journey as a global youth leader, how to grow and glow as a global youth leader. So on the count of three, I want you guys to jump as high as you possibly can because we need positive energy for you to radiate that light and life. Let's do it. One, two, three. Yay! Nice. Now, nice. major key number two was create yourself. There's this notion that we should run through life trying to find ourselves. But I don't believe that. I believe that because we already have the innate gifts, talents, skills, and passions that no one else has, we have every bit of power needed to create ourselves. I utilized my journey as a teenage public speaking champion, which led me to being a motivational speaker. And I encourage them to understand that the gifts that they have right now at 14, 15, 16 can actually lead them to not only living the lives of their dreams, but encouraging others to do the same. Let me tell you guys about my life when I was 14, 13. So, as I said, I'm, I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I was always talented in acting. I always acted in school plays. I was always the kid who was the, the number one reader. I always raised my hand. Who wants to read? Me, me, me. That was always me. I just always loved speaking. And when I was 12 years old, a teacher, I'll never forget her. Her name was Mrs. Reed. She said, Jabari, I want you to be on the speech and debate team. And so because of her encouragement, she was like a mentor to me. Because of her encouragement, I joined the speech and debate team of my school. I was 12 years old. And from that moment, I began to develop what is now my career. Literally, my career as a public speaker began when I was 12 years old. And these medals, these awards that I won, are actually older than many of you guys, probably. These awards are just a few of the recognitions that I've won in speech and debate. So, I traveled across the U.S. in high school as a national speech and debate competitor, winning first in the nation one year, second in the nation another year. I was also in geography bees, geography competitions. So at 12 years old, I didn't know that this activity was leading me to being a global citizen or being a public speaker, but it was. These medals began the journey of me being Jabari Inspires. So when I say that your destiny is already taking shape right now, I mean that. So that's what I mean when I say creating yourself, having a very clear picture of who you want to be. And from this moment, 12, at the age of 12 years old, I had an idea of who I wanted to be. So right now I want you guys to think to yourself. Let's ask ourselves a question. Who do I want to be? Say it with me. Who do I want to be? Who do I want to be? 
Who do I want to be? Now take a moment to write that down. Answer that question. I want to give you guys a few minutes to answer that question. Who do you want to be? It's so important to write this stuff down. I always say if it's not on paper, it's not real. So you have to write down your dreams, your goals, and your vision for yourself. Have you written it down? Kelvin, I like your shirt. It's a nice shirt, yeah. Who do I want to be? And who do I want to be is not always about career. I want to be a good person. I want to be a leader. I want to be a role model. You don't have to limit who you want to be to doctor, lawyer, engineer. I want, to, I want to be a world traveler. You can be whatever you want to be. There are no limitations. That's why I asked you guys to jump. Because I want you to know that the sky is the floor. Your dreams are so high. Your goals, your ambitions, and your trajectories are so high. Fatma, you believe that? Yeah. Yes, great, great. Who has already written down who they want to be? Have you? Your mother? You have? Can you stand up? Stand up for me. Tell us who you want to be. You want to be a lawyer. You want to be a lawyer. Tell me, what do you have to do to become that lawyer? I will work with all my heart and uh, contribute this in all of our nations. I will not accept some corruptions. Uh -huh. I will work free and fair. Uh -huh. And you promise to be that person? You promise to be that person? Do you promise to be that person? Yeah. Okay, all right, give me a pound, man. Congratulations, yeah. He has an idea about who he wants to be, who he wants to be. Hi, how are you? No, you. <laughs> Can you stand up, please? Stand up. What's your name? Sylvia. Sylvia, Sylvia who do you want to be? You want to be a doctor. Why do you want to be a doctor? You want to help save lives. That's great. That's great. What do you think you have to do to be that doctor that saves lives? To be considerate, work hard, and work with all your heart. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> One more. How about you? How about you? Tell me your name. And what is it? Sadoma. 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 Okay. Sadoma Benjamin. And uh, I want to become a resource person for my country and global. So I would just want, want to work hard and also perform. I, I like that. You said you want to be a resourceful person to your, to your country and globally. I like that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, you know, sometimes you won't know exactly what you want to do, but you will know the type of person you want to become. I like what you said because it's not necessarily aligned with one career path. You could do many things as a resourceful person to your country and globally. So I want you guys to think about the type of impact you want to have on the world, and that's how you create yourself. I loved what the previous speaker said about your life mission statement. You guys wrote that, right? Your life mission statement. I love that because my life mission statement is to uplift and inspire lives across the globe. My life mission statement is to uplift and inspire lives across the globe. So whether I'm a speaker, a TV host, a teacher, a coach, a mentor, it's all aligned with helping to uplift other people, especially young people like yourselves. So I'm going to pass these medals around so you guys can just check them out. This is the part of my journey where I began creating myself. So I want you guys to know that exactly the person who you want to be is who you will be and who you can be, right? All right, all right, guys. Now, major key number three was dedicate your life to a purpose greater than you. Dedicate your life to service. I want them to understand that life it's filled with challenges. 
No one, no matter how successful they appear to be, is exempt from challenges. And I shared insights from my journey as an entrepreneur and a global citizen and how I've been challenged. Yet because my journey is dedicated to uplifting others, I always stay the course because I know that I'm on a mission that is much bigger than myself. Dedicate yourself to serving others. Leadership is about being a servant. And this is very important, guys. I see you all as young leaders, but a true leader builds other leaders. A leader builds other leaders. So whatever you guys want to do, I want you to know that your journey is nothing if you haven't helped to build someone else. You can have all the money, all the cars, all the clothes, all the riches. But if you're not helping to build others, then your journey is kind of empty. You understand me? It's all about building others. So when I say serve others, I mean dedicate yourself to a purpose a calling, a mission that is bigger than just yourself. I love what you said about wanting to be that doctor and wanting to save lives. I loved what you said about wanting to be that lawyer and you know, not being corrupt. I love what you said about wanting to be that resource, Saddam, about wanting to be that resource for your country. So think about what you want to do, but think about a big picture vision. Think about a purpose bigger than yourself. What's your name? Can you stand up? My name is Ian. Ian. Yes. Ian. Like this Ian. Okay, another Ian. Great. How are you, Ian? Nice to meet you. Yes. So, Ian, tell me, what is the purpose that you want to dedicate your life to? Let's come to the center. Can Ian come to the center? All right, all right, all right. My vision or mission is to develop people with talent and skills. Mm -hmm. uh, to develop people with talent and skills. Yes. So it's not just about Ian, it's about developing others. Yes. I love that. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ian. Thank you. I'm going to get someone else, someone from back here. Hi, how are you? Can you come to the front, please? Yes. What's your name? I'm Caroline. Caroline, nice to meet you. I'm Jabari. So what is the purpose that you want to dedicate your life to? That big purpose. Big purpose. I want to, I'm studying engineering. I want to own a construction company. You want to own a construction company. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Let's give her a round of applause for that. That's awesome. But why do you want to own that construction company? And guys, I'm asking why because whatever you want to do, your why is very very important. People care more about your why than they do about your what. So if you say, yes, I want to own an engineering firm, construction company, why? I want to do buildings. Uh -huh. I want to construct buildings. Mm -hmm. And mainly, like, do not really like the big buildings, uh -huh. like help the, the small mm -hmm. Like small buildings. Yes. To help people, like bring up their, like, their homes. I love it. I exactly. I love that. So she says she wants that construction company because she wants to help people build up their communities. Not big skyscrapers, office buildings, but homes and maybe small businesses, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. That's, we need you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, guys, number three again. Dedicate yourself to something bigger than you. Dedicate yourself to serving others. It's all about serving others. This morning I woke up at 4 a.m. to drive from Nairobi to Nanyuki to be with you all because this is my passion. This is my calling. This is my purpose. It's all about uplifting you guys, serving you guys. And you know why I say that's so important? Because when you're trying to make your dreams a reality, as Jacob said, this world is hard. Life is challenging. There are so many challenges that you are going to face. Let me tell you guys, even though I have this TV show, even though I traveled the world speaking to youth, I have challenges that you wouldn't imagine. You know, some days I feel really, really tired. 
because of my schedule. Some days I feel like oh, I'm not making enough money for all the work that I'm doing. Some days I even think about quitting. But you know what? I'm always reminded that I should not quit. I should not quit, guys, because I'm my fault. <laughs> I might fall, but I got to keep going. And I, uh, uh, I might fall a second time. Uh, you might get dirty, <laughs> but you have to keep going. And what motivates me to keep going is knowing that I'm dedicating my journey. I'm dedicating my life to a bigger mission, a bigger purpose. I'm dedicating my life to you guys to help you see that if Jabari Smith can do it, then Kugin Ochiang can do it, then Kahindi Isao can do it, then Peter Jaroge can do it. You guys can do it, okay? Yeah. You can do it wherever you want to do it. I came all the way from the U.S. and I'm living out a major part of my dream in Kenya. So you can take your dream wherever you want to take it across the world. You hear me? wherever you want to take it across the world. So I want to encourage you guys, don't quit. Say it with me. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. I want you guys to dedicate your lives to that purpose bigger than you because that will keep you motivated and that will ensure that despite the challenges, Amos, you won't quit. You understand me? Guys, don't quit, okay? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Major key number four was get it done. Let me repeat that, get it done. Now, I stress get it done by using a quote from President Barack Obama in which he states that done is better than perfect. I think it's so easy for us to be very hard on ourselves when it comes to our work which often paralyzes us. And I say this because I speak from a very personal perspective, but by encouraging the young men and women that I spoke to, to understand that by getting what they plan to achieve done, they are in a much better position than if they allow perfection to hold them back. So I want them to move with the dreams, goals, plans, and visions that they have for themselves. Because honestly, perfection doesn't exist. It will never be perfect. The time will never be perfect. What we have is right now, and right now is time to get it done. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Sometimes we get caught up in wanting to be perfect. We think, oh, our essay is not good enough for school. Oh, my clothes aren't fashionable enough. Oh, I'm not smart enough to do this or go there. No, get it done. You have all the tools you need to get it done. And I say that because I don't want you guys to get stuck. I promote dream catching. You guys have big dreams, right? I promote dream catching. I don't want you guys to get stuck in the chase. I want you guys to catch those dreams, all right? Don't get stuck in the chase, chasing the dream forever. Just chasing it, chasing it, chasing it you end up going in circles. I want you to catch it and hold it and own it, okay? Yeah. Zachariah, you feel me? Yeah. All right, all right, good, good. So I want to separate you guys into teams. This morning I woke up at 4 a.m. to travel from Nairobi to Nanyuki to facilitate a leadership session. Major keys, how to grow and glow as a global youth leader for 130 dynamic young men and women who are a part of the Kenyatta Trust program. They come from all parts of Kenya and right now they are engaged in a very interesting leadership activity which has been facilitated across the globe from kindergartners to CEOs on how to maximize critical thinking, 
entrepreneurial thinking, as well as problem solving, communication, and teamwork skills. It's called none other than the infamous Spaghetti Tower. So with 15 pieces of raw spaghetti, five pieces of tape, one marshmallow, and a piece of string, they are to erect the tallest, most sturdy spaghetti tower possible. As you can see, they're quite engaged, attempting to figure out how to best construct this tower. I'm going to be actually looking at the teams to see what planning mechanics they've utilized to come up with the best spaghetti tower possible. So these young men and women are so dynamic, they're so intelligent, and they're really into this activity, and I cannot wait to see which team emerges as the victor. There were many challenges in this activity, but all groups definitely succeeded with the challenges along the way. Hey, my name is Levis Muga. Uh, I was in group three. And uh, when we were making the tower, we faced some challenges. Uh, for example, making the foundation stable was a problem because uh, the, the, the spaghetti would they are thin and they are weak. They, they broke and uh, you went to use another one, then the, the work becomes hard. My name is Kugano Cheng. I was in group four and the main challenge that we faced as a group was listening problem. Find that someone had an idea and another person had an, a different opinion. So when that person, the first person tried to do what he was thinking and no one was ready to listen to him, the other person came in and we ended up breaking the whole thing. So what I can tell is that we should give an ear to everyone. Let's give some time to everyone so that they express themselves. Everyone's opinion counts. Uh, my name is Lisa. I was in group seven. And our main challenge was also the foundation. And also we, we, were, we were not confident. We were working, our hands were sweaty, the tapes were not working, everything was just going wrong. And uh, the, the spaghetti was just shaky. They can't stand up on their own. And so we gave up. We gave up and at the end of it all, we ended up eating all of the supplies we were given. And in life, never give up because you may, you, you may never know things may work out. Uh, for us, we gave up, but it's not supposed to be applied. So in life, we should never give up. The situation will never be perfect. Actually, perfect doesn't exist. So I wanted them to know that get it done and get it done now. And number five, last but not least, was speak to inspire. I wanted them to understand that their voices are tools to not only motivate themselves, but also motivate others. Each of you, as global youth leaders, has a voice. You have a voice that this world needs. The world needs your voice. I need your voice. Your voice will motivate me. You know that? Yeah, yes. I need your voice. I need your voice. I need your voice. 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 I need each of you guys' voices. Because the louder you speak about your passions and your dreams, the more you will inspire others, other young people like yourselves, whether they're from your communities or your country or your continent or beyond. We need your voices. Now, one of the most pivotal opportunities for me that allowed me to understand that my voice was a tool. Again, my voice is a tool. Your voice is a tool. It's a tool to inspire people. Growing up in New Orleans, because I dedicated my journey to building this skill in public speaking, as you saw through the medals, I was able to get a scholarship to my dream university, Howard University in Washington, D.C. Now, it was because I dedicated my childhood and my teenage years, where you are now, to building this skill, to being passionate about creating myself, that I was able to get a partially funded opportunity to a major university in the U.S. It's in Washington, D.C., and it was founded in 1867. It's a historically black university, which means that this university was founded at a time in U.S. history where people who looked like us, descendants of this continent, could not 
actually gain access to education that others could. So this university was founded to educate the children of freed slaves in 1867. Howard University now educates more black doctors, more doctors of African descent than any other institution in the world. President Obama spoke at the graduation this year. Oprah Winfrey, you guys know Oprah Winfrey, right? Yes. Oprah spoke at my graduation. And one of the things that Oprah said that I will never forget she said, there is no such thing as failure. There is no such thing as failure. Failure is God's way of redirecting our path. So understand that even if you try something and you fail, it just means that there's something better for you. After I left Japan, I was fired from a job that I had in New York City. I loved the job. It was working with young people like yourselves. And I was fired. I lost the job that I thought was my dream job. I was devastated, guys. I was embarrassed. I thought because I'd failed that people would not see me as an inspirational person or a leader or someone who was successful. But the best thing happened to me after I got fired. I started walking in my purpose. I started dedicating my life even more so to others to a purpose bigger than me. Getting fired helped me live the life of my dreams as Jabari inspires. So no matter what challenges you guys have, know that the best is yet to come. As that poster says, the best is yet to come. Say that with me. The best is yet to come. 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 My greatest takeaway from today's session with 130 dynamic and diverse young men and women from across Kenya was that the messages that I strive to impart based around the themes of leadership, entrepreneurship, confidence in communication, and global citizenship are relevant across the globe. Meaning that whether you are from America, or Kenya, or Spain, or Japan, or wherever you may be from across the world, these ideals and skills are globally relevant. Young people today need encouragement and they need motivation and the messages that I strive to give them, regardless of the language, religion, cultural background, or nationality, are often, and shall I say always, well received. I'm on a global journey to inspire lives and nothing or no one will hold me back from doing just that. Thank you.